Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Pro Trader webinar uh, series today uh, with Good Scott Pilsini. And he uh, is a futures trader. He does this uh, every Thursday with us. Uh, but uh, uh, this is uh, the uh, Pro Trader webinar series that we've had all week. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, Scott may go through something a little different. Uh, anyway, uh, let's uh, continue on here. Uh, you guys know who Scott is. Um, he's been trading for over 20 years. Uh, and uh, uh, during that period between 2002 uh, to 2005, Scott was responsible for about 10% of the uh, S&P E-mini's future volume, uh, futures volume, it, which is just an incredible st statistic. It's it's hard to imagine. Uh and it's hard to imagine how, like, you know, you didn't have a nervous breakdown uh, during that period. But uh, uh, the amount of stress and, and um, risk is just immense. Uh, so uh, anyway, Scott now focuses on treating, trading both uh, equities and futures. He's an expert scalper uh, with an innate ability to quickly read the order flow and volume within the price patterns. Uh, he is trading on higher time frames. Uh, and uh, uh, he'll he'll show you that uh, as he goes through his presentation. Uh, I've got his um, contact information here. So if you want to reach out to Scott, he does offer mentorship, a trading room, uh, and uh, educational course on our Bookmap Marketplace. So if you're interested in that, uh, I'll put these links into the chat so you can click on them directly. Uh, go, I'll go through the disclosures and then turn it over to Scott. General disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so let's uh, turn it over here to, uh, to Scott and let him take it away. Right, Bruce, hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you do have my screen, correct? Yes. All right. So first and foremost, we've got the uh, usual Fed chirping, <clears throat> tape bombs hitting the hitting the market. So those go on. I mean, it's to the point now. You either just don't trade overall, or you just accept that you put a trade on, and they say anything that is, you know, these algos pick up a some keyword, and you're whole trade is just blown up so um spot gamma uh brent kachuba actually came up with the word tape bomb or the phrase tape bomb and it's uh, very accurate i've been burned a few times the last last couple weeks on on the tape bombs but <clears throat> it's one thing when you know that they're uh they're coming out but there's been a few where it, there's no listing that they're going to speak and all of a sudden they're just like at some luncheon or something and they say something and the market rips 40 points it's it's pretty brutal but you know these are markets it is what it is you got to accept it or don't trade so um so anyway he just started talking there was a um, pretty decent volume set up here in nq i just drew this zone so this is what we call i call a double whammy this is the the dumb money puke the retail trader puke is usually the stop runs uh, getting out of positions into the waiting hands of sell ice so the icebergs are again if you're new to these webinars <clears throat> icebergs are hidden orders in the order book that these uh these bigger entities do not want to flash their size so if they have 200 to sell you can see by this order book on the right here there's nothing in here meaning you know 200 if someone if, if, a, if an entity comes in and puts in 200 in the order book right now this market will run away from that price so they have to hide their orders so they only have to show up a certain percentage of the order and then the rest is hidden behind that order so someone comes up and they think there's a 14 lot there and then there's another you know 200 behind it as they keep trying to buy into it and that and that's and that triggers the obviously the iceberg and so it's kind of like a little surprise order for traders many times so um definitely has a huge effect to the, to the marketplace and this and these two things are the drivers of my trading because <clears throat> all right so you can see it here right now right he obviously just said something that was hawkish and the, the you know the thing just swiped down you see these sweeps this is all algos going off whatever he's saying so this is what i'm talking about like you can have a great position on and you're screwed so um, I just got RTY done. 
151 Got done drawing that dull zone, and now we have a new setup, and it's pretty much in the same area, so I'm going to delete the zone and draw this newest setup. And again, trade at your own, you're always trading at your own risk, but especially now you can just see here, like literally, someone came in and swiped down. You can see these sweeps, and then they, then the buy sweeps came in. This is all algos, you know, firing off, but <clears throat> somebody was here absorbing. 300 almost 400 contracts which is a lot this my threshold and, and queue that that i trade off of is 150 150 so 150 or more i'll trade off of it and you can see this is almost four times that so this is a um this is a good trading area especially with what just happened before too so the whole point of these is to find areas traders are loaded up trapped and then the subsequent move out of here is going to be probably a large move and that's what we take advantage of and that is what drives markets is volume not lines on a chart not indicators it's yes they work a lot of stuff works a lot of the time but it's not going to be working if the volume isn't agreeing with it so this was buy ice <clears throat> as well i'll just keep it this color i usually use these colors for double whammies but there was a double whammy that was in the same area so um then this zone's not accurate either so the way you want to draw these zones is Take your, you know, I have these bubbles on here. Take the bubbles off and get your last price line. It's hard to see with the uh, swipes here, but you can see it here. Last price line, just right click the chart, configure visible components, click on last price. That is showing you the actual last price and will help you draw your zones way more accurately. Then you follow the price action, get your cross here. That's this up here. And then you follow the price action, all the prices that occurred in this spike. All right, so this kept coming obviously i got to lower the zone because these prices were still coming in still coming in came back up so it looks like then down to here this was not part of it but this was so i got to move this this bottom of the zone all the way down to here and then i have my zone that i'm going to trade off of right? that came all the way down to right there <clears throat> so that is the buy ice zone hopefully we're still hanging out here and i'm not missing a trade all right so then we bring the bubbles back up and so guys these are just buying sell orders it's not you know guys that get book mapped they get all giddy which for for justifiable reasons it's the you know this is this is why i'm i'm still trading right if this if it wasn't for book map i would be in a doctor's office right now sitting in the waiting room with sick people waiting to go in a doctor's office for 30 seconds to kiss his ass to try to sell something so this is why i'm back in trading i was a multi-million dollar trader got knocked out of the game because of the algos so on and so forth, um, you know, and I had to get out in 2013, got back in. Um, Dr. Britt Steenbarger, uh, probably the most well-known trading and best trading psychologist on the planet. Um, good friend of mine, worked with, worked with him anyway, wrote the book in hands, he traded performance. Put me in that book, sat behind me for a year. Anyway, fast forward, he contacted me in 2017, said, hey, you want to maybe check out this book map uh, software? It's pretty incredible. It reminds me of what you used to do because he sat behind me for a full year to, to watch how I traded and see how I generated the profits that I did. So he knew exactly like the way my mind worked and, and that this that this program would be um, a great program for me. Right, we'll get into the stories, the glory day stories in a little bit. Uh, 1231, 12... 34150. So this is the spreadsheet that I use to enter my values and figure out my exact uh, trade points. This is part of my trade room. So if you want, you, you know, you're part of my trade room, you get access to the spreadsheet. And this thing has been an absolute godsend. Thank you for the traders in my room that have helped build this. Jay Labrada and Alex and a couple other guys have helped the inputs of this thing and made it better and better and better. Um, it's just pretty incredible. So the way, the way we do this is we draw the zones and then we enter our zone prices. So 12332 is the bottom of the zone. We got something that just fired off in uh, ES2. So that's your zone. Then you want to put in the current ATR, the average shoe range. I'm using a 14 period Wilder's default on Thicker Swim. You can program this to any, most any trading software. Um, you can Google what, what Wilder's ATR is. It's just literally just, it's just uh, judging the um, current volatility. So what that means is the market's moving about 20, 22, 23 points ranges at every five minutes right now so very important factor of our trading right so have to adjust the volatility if you are trading with static uh, i'm going to try my best not to be going into rants today but if you're trading with static orders there's so many people like to you know trade their trade in the es and they i like to put on you know i like to trade 
risk three points to make six. Well, yeah, on that certain day, if the volatility is doing nothing, risking three points is okay. If the if the ATR is at 12 that day and you're risking three points, good luck. It's just a sneeze is going to stop you out. So it makes no sense to have static stops and entries. You need to adjust the volatility, and that's what that's that's what we do. So you heard this. I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff. This was um, it's still relevant, but you know we just had a new uh, sell stop tape bomb here. Obviously, he's saying something hawkish. We've been talking in the room. Let me just get rid of this out. I'll get into that later when I go into my Fed rants. We'll get into all that. I like to complain about it because it's ridiculous, but it's part of the markets. With these guys chirping all day, every day. So, um, let's see. That came down to there. And it looks like it started up here. So, that looks like an accurate zone. So, I'm doing the same thing I did with NASDAQ. 4,975 down to 4,650 is your current zone. So, uh, is that no? Not 4,400. 4,650. And our ATR in here, so 5.35. Not crazy, but it's not terrible. So it means it's moving about five, five and a half points every every five minutes. That's the range. So that's again one of the most important things you can be using and judging. Looking, judging. What movie is that from? I think it's Step Brothers. I mean, um, not Step Brothers. Uh, I can't remember. Vince Vaughn. Anyway, um, I digress. So that's the zone. So now we have the prices. Now the way I determine which which way I want to trade off of the zone is when this market is able to push an ATR out of here. So I have two different types of entries. I will enter the minute it gets just outside an ATR outside of the zone, or I wait for the ATR, I wait for the retest, then I wait for the fail, and then I get in. There's certain strategies we are using in the room, so we are working on these individual playbooks. Um, all these different playbooks I am trading, some of them are, and I actually don't have, uh, I don't know, I should have put aggressive or not aggressive. So it's like this one is an aggressive trade. Right? And I would get, I would get in. I would get in the minute it broke an ATR out of there. So let's, we'll, we'll go over these and see what, let's see what, what is in play here, right? So first of all, bigger picture. This is an important zone. We call this an inflection zone. We have an exact trade called the Izzy. So I just got a volume event in this zone. It's been actually hanging out in this zone. This isn't. This is an important zone. It's a pretty wide zone. You know. Again, I. You know. I draw. Yeah, Scott. I think we lost your uh, audio there. It looks like you're frozen. Hmm. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, Bruce? now you're back. Now you're yeah, back. I've been having this issue. I got. I was gonna call him yesterday with my internet. It just like will randomly just go out for like twelve seconds and then come back on. So, sorry about that. Now all my charts are all refreshing. Sierra chart. All right, hold on. Let me. Uh, so first of all, I want to take. I'm taking this short aggressively out of here first and foremost. So meaning I am going to be short at four thousand five, based on my risk. So we're doing these um, apex accounts for each one so of these strategies. You, you may need to reshare your screen, uh, Scott. I'm I'm seeing a kind of a static screen of the ES. I'm sure the market's away from me here, so no big deal. <laughs> You see it now? Yes. Okay. All right. So I, I, I still could take this trade, but you see, based on this setup, but now you see this monster buy ice coming into. So I have to make a decision. I was going to. Stock, stock sell NQ, <laughs> 178 pound breath. First and foremost, this is obviously a little crazy with the tape bombs going off, but I'm still going to take this trade and then I'm going to trail my stop based on this new setup and then I can trade off this new setup as well. So I was what I was saying was before my internet went out three times, 
4,025 is my short based on this current volatility. I can put on six. This is risking $500. I'm trading Apex accounts. We'll get into that later. Off each one of these strategies is a separate Apex account, right? So, and we have the stats on that. I can show you the stats a little later for each one of these. Um, it's only a month into all of these. Uh, pretty small sample size, but most of them are profitable, which I fully expect because I've been doing all these for the last four years. And I know, you know, basically in my mind, I'm going to finally have structure for them. So anyway, uh, I'm going to short this. Well, let's see. You know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to trade off of this setup because this is this is large bias coming in. I mean, yeah, this is huge, right? So I was going to trade off this stop run aggressively, but this is basically trumping everything. Like, as this is the edge. If you are staring at a bar chart or any kind of chart and you don't have this information, you don't have all the information. It probably behoove you to know that somebody is stepping up here and buying almost 3,500 contracts. That's pretty important. So whoever just sold these just got a mouthful of buy ice. Does that mean it's just going straight up? Absolutely not. It's got the odds are this will hold because this is the big player. Big players, I call them the smart money. Why are they smart? Because they're because they're just all knowing. No, because they can push the market around with their size. This is what I used to be. Right? I used to play games and push the market around all day long. Did, would that make me a genius? No. I had bigger size and I can I can just push the market around like a bully. That's what's going on here. If you don't think this is the driver of these markets, then you are in the wrong business. Right? So this is very important. Right, so I'm going to draw this zone. And what my point was, we don't know if this. I would lean towards a bullish move off of this because you know these guys are huge and they could keep putting more buy buy ice in here. But if this fails, then they're wrong and they got to get out too. Right, then their risk manager is going to be calling them on the phone like I used to get calls on the phone, and literally would yank the phone out of the wall. Back then there was no. Uh, actually, we did have cell phones, but it wasn't that long ago. But anyway, uh, they're not pleasant calls. But, uh, you know, some traders fire and when they're wrong, they got to get out too. So we, the way we trade these, the way I trade these is judging how this market reacts to this area. And that is the whole basis, the whole foundation of my trading. And I was, you know, a huge scalper at one point. Bruce was telling me I used to trade 10% of the world S&P volume every single day. I got an email the other day. Some guy was like, that's a lie. You didn't do that. It's like, okay, dude, I can, you know, you want to see my trading statement? I actually have all my trading statements from back then too. So I would average over a million contracts a month in and out, in and out, in and out. I would be literally just flipping orders all day, playing games, pushing the market around. That was my gig, right? So my point being is I'm not going back to glory days. I'm not bragging, right? Because I just told you I was sitting in a doctor's office not too long ago trying to make sales because I couldn't make money anymore until Bookmap came around. So point is, I understand what, when I see volume like this, how bigger traders react, how how the area will react based on in my, my various setups. That's in my SI course on the Bookmap bar, Marketplace and, and on my website. Speaking of which, I thought I was going to have it done by today. I should have it done by Monday, the brand new one. It's going to cover everything, right? The, the, the first one I put out, guys, you got to remember, and it's still relevant. It's still a great course because it goes over what's going on in here. It goes over the, this, the exact setups that I'm still trading with this day. It's giving you the thresholds for each market that is worth trading, right? But the new course... I've evolved, right? You got to evolve. That was that was made in two thousand July of two thousand twenty. I've evolved with this stuff, and now you know we have now we have the zone drawing. I did, you know, the zone drawing wasn't pertinent back then. As far you know, I just would see the area and trade off of it. We have the zone drawing. Zone drawing. We have how to trade with the ATR. Um, we have the sweeps indicator. We have the on chart indicator. All that stuff's going to be in the new course, but. The old course is still very, very relevant, and I tell people that come in my trade room. You know, you're better off. You can come in my trade room and learn this stuff, you know, on the fly. But you got to remember, I'm doing live trading, so I don't have time to go through each and every nook and cranny of what of all these setups and everything else. So, you know, if you come in the trade room, you can learn on the fly. But you're probably better off getting the course to understand it, speed up your leaning, your um, your learning curve. So anyway course is based off of my experience so um, the reason i'm just kind of still chirping here this market just bounced around the zone so let's just put this zone in the spreadsheet 
and then we will figure out how we're going to trade it based on how the market reacts here. That's 4,005, and I'm glad it's a yes right now because a lot of you guys are ES junkies, which I don't understand. This market sucks most of the time. You are doing yourself a disservice if you are not trading, watching other markets. This volume, these volume setups, it doesn't matter what market you are trading. They're all the same. What am I doing here? Meaning, traders react the same way. It's all about volume. 30... Hold on, thirty nine ninety eight. Sorry, APR is five point four six now. Now the way we're going to trade this area is I want to judge by so you can see all these prices on here, right? So the way I judge it, that zone, if it gets to, touches this price, then that is a bearish setup. If it touches this price, you see the validation ten fifty. It's a bullish setup. And then I have various strategies that I will trade either aggressively or conservatively. So we will you will see this real time. Um, what I'm going to do, I'll talk you through it. I'm not putting on actual trades on here anymore. It's just for compliance and everything else. There's really no need. I'm wa I'm walking you guys through this. This is not like to mirror my trades. Like you could say, well, I think I think what Scott's doing is a bunch of bullshit, pardon my language, and I want to fade him. Then fade me. Here are the prices if you want to fade me. So if I go long, you want to go short, bring it on. That's all you're really doing against these other traders. This is a competition. This is a zero sum game, right? So you're 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 trading against other people and that and you know big money and algos that are trying to take your money. So you need to view it as a competition. So anyway, this is bouncing around this zone. We will wait to see how this reacts. So back to the bigger picture stuff. I know that this is an important zone here. It actually just kind of broke out of here. I was going to take that short aggressively off of that stop run, but I changed my mind off of this whopping buy ice blow here. So we have a, a specific trade called the Izzy, which is just short for it. We, we named some of these. Most of them are like funny names. Um, so they're memorable and you laugh. You got to laugh in this game or you're going to lose your mind. So, you know, they're funny. Like one of them is called Barf. Barf is actually, we'll probably put on a few Barf trades today. Uh, but Izzy is an inflection zone. So these are inflection zones. What are inflection zones? What I was getting at, the four important areas of trading. Hold well, on, that's the natural gas numbers coming out. So markets are one or, one or two states, right? So they're either balancing. These are just balance areas or traders placing bets. Longer term traders, shorter term traders, right? They're either balancing or they're trending. They're balancing or they're trending. They're balancing or they're trending, right? So the four important areas where I draw these zones are tops and bottoms of balance areas, high volume zones of balance areas. I don't just draw unless there's something else there because I'll have too many zones on my chart, but I eyeball it. You can just eyeball these areas. It's just a general area like this right now, this current balance area. I know that high volume nodes are right around there, right? It's just a smack dab in the middle of a balance area. Directional conviction and buying and selling tails. There's a selling tail. <clears throat> There's a buying tail. There's a little dude there selling tail. You would be amazed. These tails are, everything is really important, but tails are really important as well. It's just instant rejection of areas. So anyway, in this zone, we have a selling tail, a selling tail, directional conviction out of here. This is an important zone, and you can see that's why the market is still is kind of struggling here. So these these zones will trade off as fade trades as they move into them, and it also gives us information if the market just rips through them. So if this market kind of goes like it has, it's struggling, which is what usually happens. But if this market were just to go like that, that's giving you a heads up, something's up too, because it should stall in here. When you see markets rip through zones and you're like, okay, wait, something's going on here. I probably don't want to be looking for shorts right now but when you're coming up with your thesis, right? So I am a day trader. Even if I have, like yesterday, I, at the close, at the in my PM webinar, I, want, I wanted these markets to go to zero. I always want them to go to zero because I think it's a bunch of nonsense. I think they're held up and, you know, it's just, it's like a... Um, I can't think of the word, but anyway, I'm always cheering for them to go to zero. So there was a trade set up yesterday that was bullish in this zone and I was waiting to get a little balance there and there and I was hoping to go short and that was what my gut told me my thesis was like yeah I think we're gonna break but then we got a bullish setup we had sell ice that was broken called broken ice one of my six distinct setups the market moved away it retested it failed and we got short or we got long in my room and it was painful to get long but I'm a day trader and I took advantage of long and it ripped 
you know, 15, 20 points into the into the close. So the whole point is I will trade these these strategies either way because I'm a day trader. But when I get these strategies lined up with my thesis for the day, then you can trade bigger size, right? Called an A plus trade. The story I tell, um, you know, when I got back at, when I got out of the doctor's offices in 2017, when I when I was introduced to Bookmap, I actually started trading with SMB uh, Capital. I was going to learn how to trade stocks, and they they literally have they make their traders come up with um, A plus setups. And if they don't trade bigger on their A plus setups, then they are grounded the following day. They have to trade in the simulator, right? So point is, you, when you see, when everything aligns the way you think it is, and then you start to, for me, when I start to see these volume setups in that direction, you can trade bigger. Now, there's, you, you've got to be, you've still got to control your risk, right? So this is what this, another incredible thing about this spreadsheet, it, you plug in your risk and how much you want to risk on a per trade, and it tells you exactly how many you can trade, right? So for these Apex accounts, we'll get into that a little later too. So each one of these strategies has their own Apex accounts, like I said, and we'll look at some of the stats for them a little bit. Um, I'm risking 10%. That is, if you are trading a regular, your real money, your money, you do not be, I would not ever be risking 10% on a trade. If you have a bad day, which you will, you're going to blow out your account. The most this should be, the most on, on just a regular trade is 2%, right? If you get an A-plus trade, so 2% on an individual trades, just on normal trades. In a given day, you should never be risking more than 6% of your account size, ever. Just shut it off, walk away. I'm not going to go on that rant right now. I always do. Get a broker that shuts you off at a predetermined amount because you're not going to make the right decisions when you're, you know, when you're pissed off under the, you know, losing money. Trust me, you are going to get killed. I've had many, many, many rants on, on these webinars about that. So point is, if normal trades are 2%, well, if you get an A-plus setup, you can trade 4% of, the, of your account size. You just got to know, hey, if you lose on that, you've got one ball left, the, one more 2% trade, and then you're done for the day. You could risk 6% on one trade if you love the trade, but if you're wrong, you got to shut it down, right? <clears throat> and so I'm okay with trading 6% if you love an area and, you, and your thesis and everything lines up, but you've got you've to accept the fact that if you lose, you're done. And you've got to do that. That is the most important thing you can do. It's account preservation. You, I don't care how great of a trader you are. If you don't have money to trade, you're not trading. So that's another reason why we talk about the Apex stuff. <coughs> just quickly, and I'll go into this. This is just this Apex. I'm sure you guys all know about it. Go to my um, webinar with these guys. And so you go here. You can pick your account size. Um, so I'm doing, I, I was doing a bunch of 100, 150s, but some of the guys in the room were, um, they're doing the 50s because it's a better profit goal versus what you can lose. Like this one, you got to make three grand risking uh, 2,500. This one, you got to make 9,000 risking 5,000. So these are great uh, ways. And then the other thing too, so these are the prices and they have their special going on. It seems like it's every other day, but um, if you plug in, I can't remember the name. Let's see, it's the... Here. It's not on this one. Pulsini 50, I believe. Um, that'll give you the 80% the off or whatever they're doing right now. So anyway, we'll get into that a little bit. But as far as like what I'm doing, which either strategies, so I digressed a little bit. Point is, don't be risking more than 2% of your account. Here I'm being more aggressive because if I blow them out, you know, then I just have to pay the reset fee. It's like 80 bucks or something. Who cares, right? It's, it's not like I'm losing five grand on a trade or 10 grand on a trade. It, they're just incredible. It's an incredible way. One, if you're working on your trading, say you just come in my room and you want to learn this stuff and you don't want to risk your own money. And then, you know, if, when you do learn it and then you do well, then you're funded anyway. And it is night and day versus being funded or trading your own money. I don't care how much money you have. It still has a, a, a psychological effect on you when you're losing car payments, mortgage payments, kids' tuition in a day, it has an effect. When you're trading somebody else's money, yeah, it, it matters, but it's not like life or death, right? I'm telling you that is that is so important You're trading if you can trade other people's money. And then the other thing I always talk about is turning off the your risk, you know, when you put your trades on what not watching your PL. Right, that is so important. I'm going. I'm going over. I'm touching a lot of rants today, but I'm not really ranting, so it's kind of cool. All right, so now we're just waiting here. So, what is the price to make this uh, an aggressive or a, um, a a bullish setup? 
and that price is, let's just make sure this ATR, you want to stay on top of this ATR until you actually, until I actually get filled, that's what I do, so it's 5.36 now. So to make that a bullish setup, 10.25. Did this touch 10.25? Real close, right? So what, what does that mean? Well, I, I, there's no strategy right here where I'm going to go long aggressively, but I'll still go long. So for instance, the BARF trade, what's the BARF trade? It's when I wait for an ATR, a retest of failure, and it's any setup blindly. So the whole point I'm doing this is to show my room that it's this trade here. And I did this last, not last December, the December before for my trade room to prove that this is the ultimate edge, right? Meaning without any other inputs, you can literally just bring up your book map page. Now, I don't care where we're at as far as structure, Ludwig levels, we haven't gotten on those yet. Nothing else matters except for volume events, ATR, retest failure. If you just take those alone, there's an edge in that trade. You, you will be a profitable trade. And there's the, there's the ATR, by the way. So this is a bullish setup now. So that alone is an edge, right? Then you can imagine, so if that's just an edge inherently by itself, you can imagine if you find really good areas to trade, and we'll go over some of the areas that I trade, then it makes the, 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 the edge even greater. Right, and we'll get over. We'll get, get into all this stuff, but this is now a bullish setup. Now, this is the issue with waiting for ATR retest failure. Does it mean it's going to come back here? No, and that will suck if it rips away and I miss the trade. But that's why I have certain instances where I get in aggressively, where I would be in right now, or I wait for retest. This is not a great area, in my opinion, to be going long. So I am not taking any aggressive longs here. So I I demand this retest fails. Like I said, is there a chance this just rips 50 points from here? Absolutely. Then I'm not I'm not going to be part of that off of this setup. There will be other setups. If I miss this one, there will be other setups, right? But I am demanding this action for me to get long on this on this barf trade. None of these other trades are in play to go long. Slug is, we'll just go over this quickly. So slug is an aggressive trade at the important, these are Ludwig levels. So this is the second most powerful thing I've ever seen in my trading career for futures. Bookmap being number one, SI indicator being number one of number one. Bookmap, bookmap and SI indicator. Then these are Ludwig levels. So the red and the blue are major resistance support. It, you would be absolutely, to this day, I've been using these things for two years now. Still floored at how well these market uh, these Ludwig levels work. So you can imagine getting a volume setup at the Ludwig level that is corresponding with like a resistance, right? Meaning we come up here and we get a stop run. That's the slug. So if we get up, come up here, there's a stop run that fails, which I call a dumb and dumber, one of my six trading setups. I get in that trade aggressively, right? That's obviously not in play for long right now. I'd be looking to go short up near 1650 if that happens. So that's not in play. What's the next one? Liquidity trade, LIC, right? You see how these are like funny names and it helps you remember them as well. So is there liquidity? We talk about liquidity every webinar. Hey, look at that. So this is a potential liquidity trade too, right up here. We take bets every, I, I take bets every week on whether the market's gonna tag the liquidity or not. And I'm right mm, pretty much every time. Does it mean it's going right there? It could, but it probably will screw around a little bit and then it'll get up here eventually. Why? Because the longer this liquidity has been in here, the longer these guys want their fills, they don't care. It's not them trying to scare the market away. They want to get filled. So if something comes out very bullish, if these Fed clowns say something, say something that's very bullish right now, it's gonna rip right through there. Well, they're, they're letting this sit in here forever. That means they want their fills. And when they want their fills, they will get the market up here eventually to get their fills. That's just the way it works. I say it every, all day, every day. These markets are 100% manipulated. But the point is, if you can join them and understand what they're doing, then you can join along. And this tells you what they're doing. And this tells you what they're doing. If you have that information, you are a lethal, you will be a lethal trader. If you understand a little bit of market context and understand how the market should react to these trading areas, you will be a lethal trader with just liquidity and the SI indicator alone. So now, <clears throat> so that is in place. So what do I need for, so my, again, I didn't list this on here because this is an abbreviated version. My, you know, my trade room has the full version with all the descriptions of these, but that's part of my trade room, right? That's what they pay for. Come in there and you get the descriptions of all this, the spreadsheets, so on and so forth. Anyway, this one is a conservative. I'll just put this in real quick. Let's just use APR. 
Okay, test, fail trade, right? So that's the conservative entry. So I will only take the lick trade if it goes. Actually, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get rid of this zone because I'm sure it's probably confusing some people. Let's get rid of that. It's still important, but you know, we trade it up and through it. So it's not, just like anything in trading, if you trade up and through it a bunch of times, it doesn't, it's not worthwhile. This is still very worthwhile. So the lick trade, to get to that, I'm waiting for that, that, that. I'll go along and I'll play into that liquidity. And if it struggles there, I'm out of everything. That's in play. The barf trade's in play. So two longs are in play so far. Let's just hurry up and get through these. And you'll know exactly what I'm looking for. The Izzy trade's an inflection zone trade. We talked about that. That would just be a short here. I'm not going... Izzy trades are fade trades. So when markets move into important zones, I look for you know opportunities to, to fade it. Um, so this would not be a long in here. It would be a short potentially, but this setup is not a short setup. So that's off the table, right? Because we got an ATR above the zone. So that's not in play. Barf is always in play. This is the most active trade because you're, I'm literally just trading every, and this is just an individual account that I'm trading it on. Just every time I see a volume event, ATR retest failure, I take the trade, right? So that's in play to go long. Uh, Dada, that's, um, that is a, a setup, a stop run setup at an extreme standard deviation of VWAP, right? So VWAP, <clears throat> you have all these algos that play these fades at these at these extreme standard deviations, right? Kind of like that one. So what I'm looking for, I'm not taking the lugs into consideration for that trade. I'm just looking for, so if this market moves up, there's a stop run at extreme standard deviation. So this is VWAP. This is one standard deviation, one standard deviation away from VWAP called daily value area. This is one and a half. This is two. I don't have two and a half, three, four on here, but you can just visualize where they would be, right? So anyone that is one and a half or more and I get a stop run that fails, I take the dead at trade. I'm sorry, as long as there is a delta divergence. So you can see right now, there is a delta divergence. So first of all, why did this, why do you think this delta divergence happened right here? What, ha what happened right here? So this is where this cumulative volume does not give you the full picture of what's going on. If I'm looking at this, I'm like, wow, man, these sellers are, are really laying into this. They're winning. I think I'm gonna look to get short. Well, what, what piece, what part of the puzzle am I missing here when I'm just looking at this? Bruce, you want to answer that? Since I've asked you about 85 times, you better not miss it. <laughs> um, well, you, you have no idea about the liquidity. No. What yeah. what happened here? What did I draw a zone off of? What was this selling? What was this? So, yeah, there were aggressive sellers. What was there? Oh, was that would that be well, a three thirty five hundred dollar? Yeah, into the into the, the well, I mean the limit right. limit orders are the ice orders and the I mean basically right. liquidity, uh, but it was so ice. This, it was hidden uh, ice. It was hidden ice. Or, so yeah. the, the point is, the CBD is showing you. It's not showing you more sellers than buyers. It's so, showing you there's more aggressive sellers than aggressive buyers. Meaning somebody was pounding the bid here. Well, we know that. But this doesn't, if I'm just looking at this, I'm like, wow, I want to go short. Somebody's selling the crap out of this. But you don't know that in this specific area, there was 3,500 bias. That's why the CVD just dropped. It wouldn't behoove you to know, oh, yeah, dropped. They're being aggressive. But guess what? There's one entity in here that just sucked up 3,500 contracts. That's why using the CVD by itself, yes, it's important in certain areas. But you do not use this thing in a vacuum. You will get your head taken off playing divergences. Take it from me. When I first learned this thing, the first couple were like, you would see a higher high in the market and this thing was going lower and I get short and I'm like, wow, this is incredible. This is the this is the magic formula. And then you will get days where you'll see this and the market just keeps going up and up and up. And you're like, well, what the hell? And you're just like shorting, shorting, shorting and you get your head ripped off. So point is, this is important information. Obviously, you want to see who the aggressor is, but at certain areas. Right. Do not just blindly fade this thing. Right. As every time it's going the other way, you, you, you will get killed. That's that's my advice on that one. But anyway, this is the point of all that is you're using that. You have no idea that this this was basically one entity that bought all of these contracts here and they're winning right now. Are they not? Right. So how's that sell going if you were playing off CBD there? All right. So anyway, um, that was covering. Oh, that was the dad dad trade. So what I was saying is, so right now, basically, dad dad trades actually in play here. So if this market comes up here, this is extreme standard deviation, one and a half, and we get a stop run and it fails, I will be shorting the dad dad setup. 
right? That hasn't happened yet, but I have it in my mind. I know where we're at. I know what's going on with CVD. I'm ready to fire this trade in, right? And then heavy al is algo guy cross on extreme. So it, it's this is another thing we use in the room. This We call it algo guy. This is just an exponential moving average. This thing is pretty incredible in its own right. Um, we to give you information on trends and, you know, you get pullbacks to the, so the, this is just a moving average ribbon band. Just Google exponential moving average and you can learn all about it. exponential moving average bands. These are indiv individual. There's a bunch of them. I think there are nine, nine longer term moving averages and nine short term. But the blue is the short term. The red is long term. Some of the best trades are when the market crosses, meaning the short term crosses over the long term. And you can see that started this whole trend move down and now it finally crossed back above and then it may start be starting one of these. But we have a, a specific trade for once this crosses, if we see a volume event, right? But it also has to be heavy relative volume going on at, with the cross. And that's, I don't think that's going on right now, but we can check it. Let's see what the relative, relative volume. This is all part of the whole volume drives everything aspect right as you can see here right earlier today huge relative volume coming in right around here and you can see this is exactly where the market came back and held right this is just like drawing the volume events the volume events are more like you know focused to really more shorter term areas these these when you see this relative volume spiking this is you know, a lot of times a much bigger area, but they react the same way. Why? Why do you think that's happening? Because, guys, so first of all, this is based on, this is the Sierra chart relative volume. It's not think or swim. This is based on the last 30 days. I have it set for 30 days. This exact time period, the last 30 days, is the volume, you know, much higher. And this one was, right? So what's going on here? Well, somebody's obviously buying it, right? Well, somebody's buying it, somebody has to be selling it too. The aggressor was obviously the buyer, but somebody was selling it and it, they matched up and this is, a, this is a very important area. So when this moves out of here, somebody's wrong. Well, guess who was wrong? The sellers. So what happens? Well, whoever got run over that holds on as it comes back, they're like, let me the hell out of this trade. And then it does that. That's what ATR retest is, right? It works with relative volume. It works with their volume events. It, guys, it's simplistic, but trust me, that is if you can view the markets in this simplistic way, you will do leaps and bounds better than you're doing right now with your 85 indicators on the chart, MACD, Bollinger Bands, blah, 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 because this is what your mind looks like, I'm sure, right? When you go to put on a trade, you're like, well, let's see, um, I got 14 things that show me long, and then I got 18 things that show me short, um, and then the sun's, the sun's behind the cloud outside, so I don't know what I should do here, right? Make it simple. It's very simple. Volume drives market. Here is your first event, first big move here, and then you had this here. So it's actually this whole area is the main area. So meaning if this can hold, then you would expect that because all the guys in here that were selling it are all screwed. They got to get out. If this area somehow, some way, and then this is what I'm always cheering for, can get back through here, then all these buyers are underwater. They got to get out of here. So you always want to be eyeballing the heavy relative volume areas, right? And then we use the volume setups on top of that. So point is right now, the buyers are winning, correct? Came back, guess what? Some of these sellers said, yeah, get me out of this trade. And it's right here, right? So that's the information you can glean from this. So the point is the, the Izzy trade, I got to see the algo guy cross with high, high relative volume and that's not happening right now. You can see the volume's actually dissipating to Algoville. When you start seeing this stuff, that's when you get ready for your whipsaws, especially as you get into this time of day. We'll look at my trading results. I don't know, I've lost probably, I, I would say in my career, probably five, 10 million bucks overall between the 10 o'clock and noon, probably more than that actually, um, central time. This is Algoville, you do your best not to be at your screen during that time would be my number one advice. Well, even let's just glance at something as well. We're watching paint right here. So this just tells me there's a lot of breath holding right now. So all these sellers here, that sold the bejesus out of it. That's what caused that CBD to go down. Ran into a mouthful of ice. Are like just literally holding their breath. I I can will be willing to bet if this moves a little higher, you're going to see some puking, and that's these guys that sold down here, right? So we're just waiting. I, I'm really hoping we get a retest failure, and I will go along. So uh, anyway, I just want to show you some. Of, this is just one month's work because we're doing one month's worth. We're doing each one of these. This is uh, called Trader Sync. Highly recommended on my website. So guys, I show this every week. I'll keep showing it on my website. 
everything's on here. So <clears throat> trade room, well, my trade room, here's all here's all the different ones, the plans, and you get off, off of my trade course, so on and so forth. But in the main page, there's discounts to everything here. Discounts to book map. The Apex, click on that. That gives you the code. It's Pulsini50 for the 80% off or 50% off, whatever special they're running. Spot Gamma, the hero indicator. We haven't even got in the hero indicator. That can help. Um, that's this here. Very well. Fresh it. Um, but you get an extra week for free there. I, I'm not going to go down this and cover this right this second. Not important right this minute. Um, where was I? Oh. Oh, I forgot to bring up Tick Strike, my buddy. I, I complain about it, but it's essential. Like yesterday, we used it. It was it was awesome. Like I've used this thing for close to 15 years. That's how important this is. So we have this. Set, I have this set up to. You can see here we go with the waterboarding. So. Um, So these are basically just set up for the, um, just not grabbing that. Uh, anyway, I have all the, you know, these are the highest weighted stocks that drive the indices that drive the future. So I have those, I have these, but then I have all the other. So if something starts happening in crude, I'm going to hear it immediately and then I'll know to look over there. I also have my volume event uh, it, it, you guys are hearing fire off. I also hear those as well, but I've used this for 15 years. The point is, I call it waterboarding because, so say I'm short right now. I get to watch the market go like that, and then I get to listen to it. It is, I, I've never been waterboarded, but I'm assuming it feels about the same way. It's its torturous, right? So this is a huge component of my trading, highly recommended. Anyway, that's, you know, that's discounts to that too. So, and then this is what I was getting at. This is the trader scene. Click on that. This is the best one I've ever seen, I've ever used. This thing is pretty incredible. So anyway, let's look at, um, so I have each one of these strategies in here. It's pretty pathetic I have all this time to do this right now because nothing is going on. Um, so like, let, like, let's look at some of these. So this is, let's start with the slug, number 44. Get that out of there. Let's bring up 44. Come on. So the slug, there hasn't been that many trade yet. This is only one month's worth, right? But it's definitely profitable but what i wanted to show you i don't know if it shows up in here because there's such little uh, trade activity no this isn't the right one anyway let's see let's see here this thing's really incredible it doesn't really show it here it's not a large sample size so let's go to the next one click trade it's number 43 This one's not pronounced as, as much either, but there was a losing time period. The, one of these is, is, is literally looks like a mirror of my trading career. And I, and I know it's a profitable one too. Uh, 44, let's see. No, this one I just showed, right? Um, uh, about 39. Izzy's pretty active too. Izzy and Bart for the most active. Yeah, this is pretty, pretty accurate here. Yeah, so you see here, th this is literally in my trading career, and this one's never even, this uh, this time period, no, well, basically 10, this was showing nine, but between 10 and 12 is what I'm getting at. You do not want to, you do not want to be trading, actually. So let, let's look at, this was, well, this was last year's up until the end of the year. Here we go. This is like thousands and thousands. Hey, look at that. This is thousands and thousands of trades, right? Full years of trade. L look at that. This actually started at eight. Oh, you know why? I'm, I'm making a mistake here because I'm on. I'm obviously on Pacific time, so this is this is nine. This is actually Pacific time, so this is ten o'clock, ten and eleven o'clock, right? So that's exactly what I said. Ten to twelve. I was like, wait a minute. I don't remember being this bad in the, in the morning. Anyway, ten to twelve. Don't trade. That's a, that's a long way of saying that. We'll get into some of these later too. Maybe Let's see what's going on here. Any questions, Bruce? By the way, while I'm waiting for this retest, which would be very surprising uh, if it did. Not. Yes, lots of uh, questions. I've been answering them along the way though, uh, over here in YouTube, guys. In in Discord, it's in the uh, uh, special events uh, hashtag special events chat room there. Uh, so uh, if you just have just uh, interrupt me, Bruce. If there's something pertinent, just. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, um, no, I mean, I've been able to answer them uh, for the most part. 
I, someone's asking about uh, maybe uh, explaining trapped volume uh, a bit and uh, what you mean yeah. by that. One second here. I actually completely forgot I had this position on. I put this, this is actually, this is what my trade room looks like, guys, too, for the, for the record. All right, so I put this in here. That's another thing. I, I've, I've put the uh, uh, your links in there, Scott, uh, into the uh, YouTube and in Discord. Uh, so if anyone's interested in your trading room or uh, whatever, uh, your website, et cetera, it's all in there. So this is a perfect example. I, I, I should have shown you guys this earlier. So um, I was short on the CL slug we talked about and the Izzy trade, and I'm still short, and I need to be getting out of some here because this is actually – I get out in important areas, and this is another thing in my room we've been talking about. Uh, I mean, this is directly out of trading in the zone. I've added in my own stuff, but I pay myself on my trades. Number five, in important areas. Ludwig levels always. Market pro profile composite size of those POCs. We haven't gotten into those yet, but I'm going to look at them right now. VWAP, standard rate deviations. We've talked about that. Spot gamma levels. That's on the uh, equity stuff. Struggle to get through having resting liquidity. Um, important predefined zones. That's the Izzy stuff. That's my bar chart zones. And same day prior events, right? So, you can see here, this is struggling right around. I actually missed this. This is going to make me mad because I, I guarantee this is an area down here I would have gotten out. Um, let's just take a look so I can complain a little bit. I completely forgot I had that trade on just because I was ramp rampaging, chirping. Um, yeah, pretty much. Let's see here. So I don't get out of VWAP by itself, but this was... I would have definitely got out of at least a third. I have 10 on, 10 micros on, which is, well, you guys, there's nothing wrong with trading micros. It allows you to not be all one and done. You're just trading one contract. You're doing you're doing yourself a disservice because you can't, it's all or nothing, right? So I got to stop talking for a second. So anyway, that came down to VWAP, which was confluent with this prior market profile composite high, which is pretty close to that point in control. So I should have been out of some of these way, way lower. Um, and then this is also a prior volume event. So I'm going to watch this for one second and then just see if this can rip a little lower here. But this is the most recent stop run. So let me get out of, um, and we'll go over what I had on. So I had the slug, obviously. This was the, here, just quickly. This was the trade I just talked about. Stop run at Ludwig level, right? So, and we're retesting that zone. So Ludwig levels quickly. Go to our website. It's uh, ludwiglevels.com it's very modern just kidding it's actually in my trade room too so if you have questions go in here put your name in three free day trial so you saw it on the bookmap webinar special webinar event you get discounts and my room gets discounts as well to other stuff but anyway that's what i'm using ludwiglevels.com i always get like these emails like what did you say ludo ludo levels so that's that's the website all right so anyway i'm looking to get out of at least probably half of these down here Giving it one more chance to blow through. So anyway, the slug was in play. The stop run at a Ludwig level. There was actually, um, this was extreme standard deviation as well. And that was this trade. And I, aggress I ended aggressively, so that was this. Right? Right here. There was no delta diversion, so that, that, that wasn't in play. That was that. I got in aggressively. Then, that was also the Izzy inflection zone trade. Right here. Put both of these in, the, in my room. Give them a heads up. Market moved into this important zone. It's a zone, guys. It's not exact prices, right? And I, I print these zones every day for my trade room, too, just quickly. I'm going to have a subscription for non-trade room members eventually, too. I just haven't gotten around to it. But every one of these, you can pull up the chart, blow it up. It actually opens even bigger than that. And you can copy all these. Some guys copy these levels under the book map, right? So that's another advantage of my trade room. But was what I posted this morning, and that was this zone. Obviously, we're up into it, but this is what you should have been watching for and for a volume event, and you got it. So I put on the Izzy, Izzy short and the um, <clears throat> and the slug. So keep in mind this here. So now this is back to that area. I'm definitely getting out. If I see, and this is where you want to use your bubbles, right? So the first time down here, if I was on this screen, I definitely would have been out of half when I saw these blue bubbles coming back in. Now I'm going to give this one more chance. Hopefully, it can blow through here. Uh, these were prior events today. This was a big stop run this morning. You can see here to the downside, actually. Um, so if this does make it down here and starts to struggle, meaning I start to see blue bubbles, I'm out, or even in here because this is that important area that I just showed you. This is VWAP, and it's a prior market profile composite high. I will get out of half my position. I'm short 10 each, and Izzy and Slug 
and you got VWAP confluent with that. So I'll give this one second. Let's see, I think we're retesting that ES zone, but I don't want to miss to get out of this trade, out of this trade. There you go. Hey, wow, I've, I've, never, I've never seen this pattern before. This is the first time for everything, guys. Kidding, this happens, in my mind, from what I've watched about three million of these setups, it happens 70% 70 or higher, where the market will retest the volume event. It's just one, you know, the guys that are caught somehow will push it back. These algos come back to the high volume event. They, these algos, guys, there's algos that are built based on the same information. Anyway, it's uncanny. So anyway, for this market, we have now two potential setups, ARF and LIC, that I will go long. All right, so see that what I'm talking about, like this is letting me know they're hammer and gold right now. I would have never known that. Hold on, let me get my, so I'm going to go long here in ES. I'm going to, Number one, you want to keep an eye. I don't want to. Hold on, I gotta get out of some of these crude. Uh, that's that one. Hold on. And that one. I had another personal count on too. I think I remember some of this stuff. But. So what happens when you're on one screen and you're watching 85 markets? That worked, I think. All right, so all right, I'm out of half of all that for crude. Now, now it's now it's now it's going to drop like three bucks, which is fine. I still have some on. All right, so anyway, back to the CS trade. We already know the zone prices. Nothing's changed. There's been no new event. We've retested this zone. Let's make sure this ATR is correct. You always want to be changing this until you enter your trade. So the ATR is 5.26, pretty close. I will change that. Not a big change there. Sometimes it's a huge change. You've got to keep an eye on it until you get the fill. So mm -hmm. Now, what, is this, what does this tell me? My zone prices. That was the zone. To make this a long setup, it needed to touch 1025, which it did. All right, went a little higher than there. It actually, we have another trade called a reversion trade. It pretty much touched this exact two ATR and came back to the zone. These, this is like a scalping type trade we're doing in my room as well. I'm not going to get into that. I don't, I don't take those trades on the webinars because it's just, I can't keep up with them. They're just, it's it's literally like a scalping type. You're in and out. So those of you that need the constant action, you know, I always say if you need action, go bet a horse race. But, you know, if, you, if you're that type of trader and some guys, my mind was built this way. This is why I was a scalper, right? So, but we have, I, so I understand that mindset. Trust me, it's taken a lot of years, a lot of years to be able to, one, be patient enough to wait for that. Two, when I get the trade on and watch this action for about six hours, that it it's very hard, right? I've, I've conditioned myself, but my brain, that's why I became a scalper in the first place, because my brain is this type of trader, right? And there's and there's nothing wrong with that. If you have the right strategy, you can't just be a click trader in here and think you're going to make money. I'm telling you, guys, why do you think I'm trading this way now? Do you think I didn't like making millions and millions of dollars scalping? <laughs> I just didn't want to do it anymore. I wanted to give myself a challenge. No, because it's not possible from what I, my experience, just sit here and, and, and get in and out all day. You're, you're going against, I was one of the fastest clickers on the planet. I wasn't as fast as a computer, right? So you're not going to just give that up. If you're trying to do that, you're not going to make money consistently. You show me any trader over, you know, a month, six months, a year, that is just literally click and click and click and in and out, in and out, in and out. That is a profitable trader. With the commission churning, everything else, it's just not going to happen. So that's why I trade that way now because I can't scalp. But anyway, that this this is the closest to the scalp. All right, so what's going on here, first of all? Okay, I was waiting for a retest failure of the zone. Do you see me getting long right now? No. So I have, this. that's not my, I guys, this is all from watching thousands of these setups. I used to say, I used to be like, you know what? Why would I have to wait for this to move back out of here? I'm gonna, I'm gonna be aggressive here and just get, right when it comes back here, I want to go along. Well, yeah, I trust me, I would love that too. Do you think I like waiting for this to move back out of here? No, I've learned the hard way. When you, I would just buy as it moved back in the zone, it would run me over. I'm like, yeah. After it happened about 400 times, I'm like, yeah, this is probably the best way. Let it get, let it get back out of here, and that kind of proves that this market, that this volume event is bullish, right? So anyway, we got the 1025. It actually moved out two ATRs outside of here. Here's your retest. Now, if this comes back, oh, by the way, I, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? It's almost like I'm psychic. <laughs> the minute I covered that damn half of that trade, bye-bye. Moron. There 
go. This is me all day, by the way. You guys, and I'm human. That's why I tell my room every day. They get to listen to me, bitch, twice a day. I'm, I do the same thing twice a day, live trading like this, or, you know, going over markets and stuff. But guys, girls, everyone on here, there is nothing wrong. Read any tra trading psychology book. If you are oppressing your emotions, acting like that doesn't bother you when you get out there and then you watch a hundred tick move lower or you're taking loss after loss and you're like, it's okay, I'm okay with that. And you're lying to yourself. All you're doing is you're building up all of this anxiety and mental just crap that you, that I personally have to get out as I'm trading, right? So I sit there and bitch all day long, kind of like this one, but that helps me get it out. So I'm okay mentally, right? So I bitch, but I don't let it affect my trading. You got to get to a point. You've got to get it out. So however you get it out, I talk. Whether I'm on my webinars or sitting here by myself, I talk all day. You know, complaining, whatever. But that helps me get it out. Right. So I, the story I used to tell too. My wife's used to it. Obviously, wife and kids. It doesn't even phase them anymore. But when I first started in my trading firm back in the day, once I started making a bunch of money, I got my own. I got my own office. Right. Everyone had to share an office. So people would walk by my, past my office. They knew I was by myself in there, and they'd be like. Hold on, I want to get, if this starts to roll out of here. Remember I said I'd be getting out of this a couple more here. Let me get out of uh, two more here. If it starts to move higher, which it is. Second. My trade's more important than my glory days of stories. But, so one second here, 44. Here. Um, so anyway, they walk past my office and they go in the in the um, they go into the uh, office of the owner and be like, "Who is Polsini talking to in there?" Like he's just like screaming at someone, <laughs> and he would just be like, "Yeah, that's his imaginary friend." Because I've been talking since day one, guys, and I have to talk or my head will pop off of my shoulders. So the 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 thing to, to get from that is you've got to get your emotions out. Is whether it you talking to yourself, go for a run, punch something. You don't want to punch screens. I've learned the hard way there, too. I've punched many screens in my life and broken screens and just thrown away money for no reason. I'm much more mature trader now, but I still bitch all the time. So get used to it. If you're in my trade room, they hear it nonstop. All right. So any any questions? I'm sorry. I kind of did. I forgot. What was even the original question there? Nothing's happening yet here, guys, anyway. So that's why I'm kind of all over the place chirping. Bruce, what were the other questions? Uh, no, I think we, we've um, uh, answered most of them. Uh, there was uh, something about the just trapped money, um, what you meant by that, but uh, um, oh, that was about well, it. It's just trapped money. If you're, okay, so at the time, you're this, you're these sellers that jumped in here and sold the bejesus out of this and you ran in and you're like, yeah, because all, all it's showing in the order book is about 10% of what's, what's this. So it would say it was a 300 lot. Say you were a decent sized trader. And you're like, oh, I'm going to hammer that 300 lot. I'm going to sell another 300. Actually, I'm going to sell another 600 and this market's going to rip lower. And then you do that and the market goes nowhere and you're like, oh, wait a minute. Someone just absorbed all my orders. And then it starts to do this. How are you feeling? That's how you, you have to view these markets and how you would feel if you're the big trader, how would you react? It's the same, they're gonna be reacting the same way, right? So that's why I said there was breath holding up here. So whoever sold here was like, they obviously had some decent threshold where they can hold it for a little bit, but I, I would be willing to bet. And if it's, I still think it's probably gonna happen. If this moves up to here, you're going to see, let's even use the accurate color here, you're going to see stop runs. Right? Guys puking. So my point is, trap traders are the guys that are aggressive that are wrong. Or if this market does this, guess who's wrong? Mr. 3,500 buyer. And trust me, all, all the guys that think they're smarty pants and smarter than me, and which you probably are, but the point is, it doesn't matter. I, I could just hear it, hear it echoing. But you don't know what these guys were doing. That could have been hedging options. They could have been getting out of shorts. It doesn't matter. It's the area that's important first and foremost. In either way, if this market goes like this, well, guess what? When they buying here was not the right decision, no matter what they were doing, they could have bought lower. See what I'm saying? So anyway, it's the area that's important. That's that's and make it simplistic. You just got to think these guys were the buyers, these sellers. Whatever way it moves out of here, is someone's wrong? They have to puke out. That's how you have to view it. it, it that's how you should view it, and then it'll make trading much much easier for you. So now we're waiting. Did you see like? 
this is why I wait for that because that's not happening. If this gets through here, it's go time. Will I take a short off of the setup? No, the short is disqualified for me personally once it's able to get an ATR out of the zone. But trust me, this moves lower, you're gonna be getting some new volume events, and then I can go short. All right, so now I just wait. It's called patience. They call me Mr. Patient. <clears throat> All right, let's see where, uh, I just wanna see some other places I'll get out of the rest of these crude trade. As you see, it's just bouncing off of, this is another place. So I already got out of a couple more, but this is a place where I get out. Yellow lug is an important area, especially if it's confluent with something, and that's pretty close to VWAP and the top of this guy. This moves a little lower. I will watch the bottom of this market profile composite, and you see it respect to the top exactly. So many times it'll bounce off of there. So I'll, if it struggles there, then I'm out. If it just rips right through, then this is where you want to use your bubbles and your tick strike. We were doing this yesterday. We used tick strike. There was a prior volume event. Actually, I have it right here, I think. Let's see. I'll show you my long from yesterday. These are all my zones I put in. This morning, that was this morning. This was yesterday. So we were watching, so I got, this is this is perfect. This was exactly what I got long off in yesterday's webinar. So you had, this happened earlier, but this was, so this was a sell ice event, right? The market moved in ATR, actually outside of an ATR, it came back, it took a while, came back. This is the exact setup we're looking for now with that buy ice. Came back, retest failure, I got long two setups. And then I was watching, there was, there was this prior event from the day and there were spot gamma levels. And I was watching here and I was telling my room, trade room, use this to help you because if this thing's just firing off, buy, 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 well, you don't have to get out. So I use this to judge if it's going to struggle in an area and the bubbles. And this, we even played the Jefferson's theme song up here, moving on up. I got that from uh, a guy that I used to trade with one of my best friends. He used to play, every time he got long the yes, he would blast the Jefferson's theme song. If you're old enough to remember that, I'm not going to sing it because my voice is terrible. Anyway, we played it, trying to get it through this area. So guys, you got you to gotta laugh, right? So the trade room is fun sometimes too. It's not all me bitching. Anyway, we tried to play the, the song to get through here. Didn't happen. Then I started seeing the cell bubbles. These things got silent. I got out. I got out of like half or a, I can't remember exactly. But I ended up getting out of all of them at the close. Anyway, this is what I'm talking about, right? So this is a prior volume event. I started to struggle. So those are areas where I will get out as well. I forgot why I was even talking about that. but Oh, because of the crew. That's why I got out of a couple more because this is a prior volume event from this morning. Right. And you can see it's starting to bounce off here. So that's why I got out of some more. So I still have a couple shorts on. So if this does crater, I'm still in it. Other than that, I pay myself as, this is part of my trade room too, you get access. This is just straight from trading in the zone so you can read it yourself. But this is kind of condensed version right there. Prior market event. So there's a lot of stuff here and I get out of more. That's why I got out of more. VWAP. Uh, there's a little risk liquidity. No proof of buying zone tiers. Same day market event and a mar uh, market profile composite low. Right? So there's no conflict in my trading. Right? I, I put on my trades based on my volume events. Then I will piece out at certain areas if the market struggles there. And then my I always leave a portion on for the bigger. Trying to get, like for instance, this, I will leave this on. So say nothing else fires off here. Uh, SI event wise, right? The, the, the driver of my trading. I will leave this on trying for that puppy, right? So there's, so say I still have like five on in each one of these. I will get out, you know, I'll, I'll piece out if it comes down like baby love. I'll leave like at least two or three on trying to get to here. That or an opposing volume event that's bullish. That's the only time I will get out of the full trade and or stopped out. That's how I allow myself. We were talking about this yesterday in the room about R trading, right? Everyone, most people know 2R, 3R, 4R. I only put on trades and I, I'm only looking for 4R. That's great, yes. And my, my position trading, all these setups, these position trading setups are looking for R, you know, multiples on your trade. And that's that's how you make money trading. I 100% agree with that. But I don't ignore areas. Just because I want a 3R trade, do I ignore important areas? Is the market struggling there? Just because I want 4R, the market doesn't care. I tell you all the time, the market doesn't give a flying you know what, what you want. So I, yeah, I want 4R. I put, I think it could go 4R based on everything I'm looking at. But when it struggles in important areas, I'm getting out of some of my trade. Right? I'm going to keep some on, looking for the bigger move. So that the R is yes, it's important. And I've always told you guys, yes, you want multiples on your trade, but you just don't ignore things because you want something to happen.
right? So that's the point. I get out of stuff at important areas if it struggles. So back to ES, see what's going on here. Stock sells ES. 376 contracts. Now we actually had a volume event here in now. Uh, Eli Seisberg buys ES. 180 contracts. So that sounds like a double whammy beans. It's, it, you are doing your disservice if you're not watching a lot of these products, especially grains. These are some of the best trades, right? Some of the best trading that respect. You see nothing's going on, and all of a sudden, uh, here's 376 stops and a 222 buy ice. That's pretty important information, right? Let's hurry up and draw this, and I'll go back to NASDAQ. I may have missed the trade in there. I forgot to even draw that. That stop run started right about there. You can see the sweeps. I'll go over this a little earlier. It didn't stop here because you see the market popped up there. That's not where this, because the sweeps generate the stops many times. So all sweeps are stops, but not all stops are sweeps. That's, I'm sure, very confusing to some, but we'll get into it a little bit. This is only 69, but yikes. All right, so there's some puking going on. Look at this, back-to-back -back double whammies. This, because this is why this is the driver of my trading. Look, you think here. So you're looking at this. Do you do you know this is happening right now? Tell me, tell me what you're what you're seeing here. Well, first of all, I know this is dizzy. So, but you're like, yeah, wow, this uh, this looks short to me. This looks like it's going to go like that, it's chart wise, right? What do I not see? Well, I don't see. There's been uh, 500 over five, almost 600 buy ice here. So one, there's there's selling. I'm doing air quotes. This isn't real selling. This is not initiative selling. Yes, you could stop into trades to get into trades, but most of the time when you see stop runs, it's guys puking. So first and foremost, I know right away that this is not real selling right here. This is guys puking. Then I know there's big money buying it here as well. So I'm looking at a bar chart. I'm like, yeah, I'm going short. That's, that's not all the information. So something's obviously going on in grains. Now you got wheat stuff. Let me just draw this real quick and then we'll potentially trade off of that. Shall keep both of these in there. So you got to use some judgment too. You could a lot of for like the reversion trade. We always go to the most recent event. You could draw this on there, but this was a lot, pretty much back to back. I'm gonna incorporate it all, right? And it's not that big of a zone. It's only four cents. And you got a lot of traders loaded up here, right? You got puking, and then you got someone buying it, big time. Let's draw this bottom of this zone. I think that's correct. I try to make my double whammies. This is a double double whammy. You don't see those very often. Dark blue. And I want you guys to do a guys count. How many times I say guys in the webinar? I think I'm already at like 32. So let me know what that count is at the end of the webinar. All right, there you go. So that's your zone. So quickly, let's just plug these values in and you guys can see exactly I just said guys again remember I want to run and count 15 11 25 down to 8 25 for your spreadsheet this thing is a godsend I don't have to do it by eyeball anymore which is huge because I make mistakes non-stop come to see yes oh wait 25 no short-term memory as you can see anyway, And the bottom of the zone again was, well, that was the bottom of the zone, sorry. 825, so 11, 1125 is the top of the zone. <clears throat> and you here, let's see that at the middle of that screen, 2.57. That means it's rotating two and a half cents every five minutes, right around. Very important. I don't know if I've mentioned that. All right, so to make this a short setup, it needs to touch 0575. To make it a bullish setup, it needs to touch 1375. Pretty sure it's already close to a, but this did not get down, so we don't know what, I don't know what this is yet, right? So if this is a bullish, a bearish setup, the barf's always in play, because that's just the blind ATR retest failure of any volume event. I can go short on that. Let's check out our liquidity, see if the lick trade's involved. There is lick both sides, so I can, this still is a lick trade. I played a little, sorry about that. For that, if this turns out into bullish setup, I could play for that, right? There's lick on both sides. Some days you see it all line up one way, and then you also want to use this. It's a Trader Map Pro. This thing's incredible too. 
this gives you, you just put in the values. So for instance, this one, um, this is a newer indicator, it's part of Global Plus. You guys should all be getting Global Plus. It shows you the sweeps and everything else. Like it's, you're doing yourself a disservice if you just have the regular version or the, I think Thinkorswim has like a, what's the deal with Thinkorswim, Bruce? I always get questions on this, I don't know. Is it just like a dumbed down version or what do they offer? Yeah, I mean like the, the good question. Um, uh, we, we get the question all the time as well. Um, so the, uh, think or swim version is 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 great um uh they're still working on it and developing it and they're just you know behind uh the the desktop version of bookmap uh and the um there's data limitations as well uh you're going to be getting dx feed data uh and uh you won't be able to look at the stops and icebergs uh and all of the um uh, add-ons that we've developed in here uh, in bookmap so the the sweeps uh, indicators the stops and icebergs and uh, and many more uh, market pulse uh, heat map trader map pro etc uh, they're just um, you know they're in development and they're just behind uh, us that's all right all right so quickly guys if you don't know what the CMA MBO data is just google it first of all like anything else on the, in the world all right right on their website explain what this is so market by order it's an enhanced it's enhanced data that's how that's how the book map developers are able to see the stops and icebergs it shows you all the benefits increased transparency i am fully convinced again this is my opinion they came out with this about seven years ago now a long time ago or six years ago there was a period and you can google this too and read about it like i'd say 2012 to 2015 16 it was the retail trader was dying Right? They were like a dinosaur because they couldn't make money. They're just every, every retail trader is getting whipsawed all day long. So it was shark eat shark. It was algo versus algo in here. I'm again. This is my opinion. Don't know for sure, but I think it was kind of let's let's feed the retail trader. Let's give them a little a little little something something and start showing them a little bit of what's going on in the markets to to level the playing field a little bit. Right. That's my opinion. It's definitely worked because there's the retail traders kind of back a little bit to help feed these. It's bigger money, but at least we can see what's going on now. You know, the bigger traders, I'm sure the big firms are not happy with this information. And I get, I do get questions all the time. Well, what happens if this goes away? Because the CME can pull the plug in any minute, right? I mean, then we would not have this information. I don't think they would do that at this point. It's been around too long. It would look very, very shady if all of a sudden they just, you couldn't see this anymore, right? It's just basically like, oh, we're just going to appease our, our bigger players there, there would be an uproar. So I don't think it's going away. I don't know. I don't work at the CME. Uh, but anyway, you go in here and you read it. And you can read market by price. To this day, this is what's still, I, I can't get wrap my mind around. Rhythmic software data feed is the only data provider that provides you that, that data. And this is what drives the SI indicator on Bookmap, right? And if you go so quickly, because I get questions about this all the time too, you go to Bookmap Marketplace, right? Everything's right here. So if you want the SI indicator, and that is the driver of my trades, I mean, what I'm talking about the entire day, NBA will make bundle and the trader map pro. We'll look at that here. That's what that includes, right? Then you need, so you get that, and then you need to get a rhythmic feed because this is what the only software provider that provides. I don't care if you have CQG, um, all the other ones. None of them give you the CME MBO data, which is shocking to me. It is what it is. So you can get the rhythmic data through here. And then the other thing I get asked too is like, well, what's all this? So these are a few just trades. So I get all the time. I get, I just trade ES and NQ. Well, then all you need is the CME. But if you want to trade all the all the exchanges under the uh, CME umbrella, here's the umbrella because the CME owns all these now. Then you get the bundle. So each one of these are 39 bucks by themselves, or you get the bundle. It's 99 bucks, and you get all these. I highly recommend you get the bundle because you can scan other markets for the exact things we've been talking about all day long. So that's a quick little rundown of that. Really exciting markets, by the way. Get on here and then nothing. And by the way, look what crude's doing. Now I'm happy I got out of some. Look what it bounced off of. I should just get rid of this. It's annoying me. Right off the prior. Do you, do you guys think this is coincidental that it came right here? This is this was the, there were buy stops here and then sell stops. That's that. Look where this market stopped. That's not coincidence. It's a volume event. That's why I got out of some. So that's that. So I'm still in that. And I'm going to hold the rest until I get stopped out or I see an opposing value on that or I see blue luck. 
Um, quickly, let's just go back here. So what I was showing you with Market, uh, the Trader Map Pro, you can go in here and I have mine program. I just want to see every order, nothing less than 50 up to 1,000. You can make this 10,000, doesn't matter. You're not going to see 1,000 lot. Very often. 181 pound bread. So for the liquidity trades, you can use that. You can use this Trader Map Pro too. And this one just happens to be both sides. We'll bring up some of these other ones. This shows me that the market is probably going to range over the next day or two, right? I mean, this is 60 cents wide. But I can still take liquidity trades either way. I need to see ATR retest failure to, to take them, but that's that's one of the trading strategies. So that's where how you use Trader Map Pro. Let's like here. Let's look at uh, let's look at ES. Just see what that looks like. <clears throat> It's the regular ES one. Uh, right here. Like this just gives you like it just clears up your brain, doesn't it? You're like, oh wait, huh? Yeah, there's one little band here, but there's there's a lot down here. I think I want to base my thesis to go short. Right? Why? Because this is a magnet. There's a little bit up here. Doesn't mean it can't come here, fill this, then go. This is this is a. You know, I'm not saying this is going to happen right now or even today, but it would behoove you every morning to make this part of your trade plan. You bring up and find the liquidity. A lot of days you're just going to see this and then black hole up here. You you know we're going down here. Why? I've already explained why. Because the big money runs the show and they will get the market down to their orders. These guys want to get filled. They will get filled eventually. Trust me. I tell you guys all, I mean, that's what, my 40th guy, by the way. I used to play this game all day, every day. This was my game. I put in big orders. I know I've talked about this many times. It wouldn't be this far away, but I'd be here, and I would. the market would be like 10 points away or something, and I would put huge bids down. I could trade up to 3,000 at the time, so I would put like 2,000 in. And then the market would be just meandering, doing nothing, and I would sell like 200. I'd see how the market reacted, and it would like swipe down a couple points or like a couple ticks. I'm like, all right, that worked. I'd sell another 200. Another point down. I'm like, okay. Then as it got closer to my order, aka the resting liquidity, I would just step on the gas and sell like 500, 300, 500. People would see that because you can see the orders trading, obviously, in the order book, in the dome, depth of market. And they would jump on my coattails and they'd push it right. So I'd be short 2,000 and they push it right into my waiting bids. And I'd get out and I'd be done. Rinse, what is it? Wa rinse, wash, repeat, or wash, rinse, repeat, whatever. And I would do that all day long, every day. So that's how I know what's going on in here because the big money runs the show. And I was the big money at the time, and I would run the show. I was hated throughout the, the industry. Hated. I was hated in my own office. The one day I was walking through my office, I was walking past, I can't remember who it was. It was a trader that was, he was there for a while. Because every time the market would move around, it would be me flip my, because to trade 50,000 contracts a day, that's what I used to average, 50,000 round turns a day. Right? And that's when the ES was only trading 500000 in a day. To average that, you got to be pretty damn active, right? So I was in there doing this crap all day long, playing the games I just told you about. Well, anyway, I was hated across forever. Everyone knew it was our, our, our um, firm was 023. Everyone knew it was 023 because back then you could see Counterparty. And then they knew I was the biggest trader at 023. There was another guy, too, for a while. Um, so they would literally curse me. I'm surprised that I didn't have someone come to my firm and try to off me. But anyway, I'd walk, I'd walk past, I was walking past this trader's room. He was in my firm, part of my firm. F you, Pulsini, you mother, blah, blah, blah. I, I opened his door. I'm like, what did I do wrong, dude? I'm just going to the bathroom. He's like, oh, sorry. I thought that was you in the market. <laughs> so that's a true story. All right, I got to take a breath. What? Is, any other questions for us? That one still makes me laugh. Uh, no, no, I think I think we're good. Um, yeah kind of caught up uh there's speculation on how many guys that uh you would uh say uh but uh or they they wanted a uh maybe a uh a poll in here but uh yeah i i thought i'd maybe, maybe we'll do it another time <laughs> how many times to say guys in the webinar yeah yeah um no uh other than that uh nope pretty good here um just some uh, questions about the uh, rhythmic and mbo bundle etc um, all right, so as you see, I mean, this is why I'm telling stories because this market sucks. But let's we'll see when the, I will promise you, whatever way this breaks out of here is probably going to be the big move, right? My long plays are still play. The only time I'm not going to take that long is if this pushes an ATR below this zone, right? And that obviously has not happened, but we got to keep an eye on the ATR. So we're going to keep putting this in. 
until something, until we get out of there. So this was 5.26. I'm sure it's come down now because it's gone nowhere. 5.01, right? Go with a little waterboarding, 5.01 now. So my invalidation price for that zone to take along was, so these are the same prices, 39.93. So this such as 30, 30, 39.93.50, it's disqualified as a long. That was with this ATR. Let's put in the new ATR. That's 5.08. See if that changed. Oh, it's 93.75. So it's come up a tick. So meaning I will not. I'm still sitting here waiting, locked and loaded to take the longs. If this touches 93.75, this is disqualified as a long setup. It's also disqualified for me as a short setup because this was able to push an ATR out of here earlier on the long side. So I will just be done with this area and I'll wait for a new setup, right? But you can see, this is why I just don't jump in these zones. I wait for it to show me what it's gonna do, right? So I'll wait there. I missed it. I just, I don't even wanna bring up NASDAQ because I know I missed a big trade in there earlier. I was looking at it. I just glanced at it. Let's, uh, I'll maybe bring it up here in a second. Let's, let's go to something maybe we can trade. That would be cool. More buy ice. Another 338. So you got 220, 218, 338. So you're looking at almost 800 buy ice here. Right? That's pretty important for information. I'm going to just make this zone bigger. Soy oil ice ice for 5DL. 151 contracts. And you can see in another, I'm not trading soy oil, oil right now. Uh, even though that's been very active lately. You can see this is one house. That's the show line. That, that's what the SI on chart gives you. That's just this. It's just a different way to, we got the sub chart that's down here and then you have the on chart shows you on there. I always get questions about settings, right? It's not, I don't trade off the sub chart as far as the lines. I I use this, I mean the, the on chart, I use the sub chart. I use these spikes. So this is now a five, five point zone, but it's warning. You know, I'm okay with, you could just draw this most recent volume event, but I want to incorporate all of this by ice. Okay. So now I'll just trade the same way I trade any other one. Let's see what's going on here. I'm just starting to hit equities. So there is a question, uh, Scott, about um, uh, someone who usually um, accesses and trades the ES. Uh, what would be the next market you would recommend? Um, well, if you don't want equities, you know, obviously you want to watch ES, NQ, Russell are my three main ones that we watch and trade. I have Dow up too. I don't trade that that often. But if anything, you want to have these up like Russell and Dow. When you start hearing setups in these markets, something bigger is going to happen. I don't know why that is. It's just you think because these are so thinly traded, these markets would mean nothing. It's just it's opposite. When you hear stuff firing off in here, I don't think we've had anything in here today. The other thing too here quickly is you want to bring this up so you can because when, when first of all when you're watching a bunch of markets, you're going to hear this stuff's going to fire off. You're going to hear it, but you're not going to hear it. You're going to listen to it, but you're not going to hear it. This you bring this up to be able to keep track of you know what's going on, and that's just going here file and alerts and then you hear it audio and then you hear it or you see it and then that's all in here you can set that all up in the settings all right so here's for my tech for my stops i have my texts and my voice the text i just showed you the voice is what you're hearing and then then you put up your threshold so i, I move my b instead of 175. so anyway um the other markets you probably want to watch if you're not you know besides equities because a lot of times obviously the equities are all moving in tandem Right, so you don't want to be loaded up in three different. You could, but uh, I would watch crude. It's a pain in the ass. It's Algoville, but it's you know, it, 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 you, there's one or two houses in here that just run the show. Right, they just you can see it. If it looks like a Christmas tree, it's Algoville, but it's still, it's a very active market. Put it that way. I would watch crude, trade them the same. You're trading all these setups the exact same way as long as you know the thresholds, meaning the amount. On the sub chart that's worthwhile to trade then it doesn't matter what market you're watching i, I so i watch crude I, gold probably not it's a it, most of the days it's just stop runs back and forth i'd watch grains i definitely wheat and beans uh, without question these are some of my best products <clears throat> uh, let's see here i heard something in wheat earlier too i forgot to come over here Yeah, threshold in here is 150, so this is a zone. It's just sitting here right now. But so I would say grains. Uh, but I watch 17 markets, right? I literally, a lot of people don't have the bandwidth for that. Completely understandable. I am able to do it. I still make a ton of mistakes by doing it, but I'm doing it, and I'm you know talking about all these, all these uh, products on the webinar. But you can see Russell, Nasdaq, 
yes, gold, bonds, Dow, wheat, beans, uh, soy meal, soy oil. I don't trade these that much, but we're starting to watch more because it's the same stuff. Why, why miss opportunity? It's the way I look at it. Copper, silver, natural gas. I trade that quite often too. Natural gas is a good one. And crude. Natural gas, this is the most algorithm market on the planet. If you are going to trade this thing, you better be ready for a uh, bucking, bucking Bronco type trade because you will very rarely put on a trader. These these setups work incredible. Right? When you get the threshold, threshold is 150 in here. Nothing's been threshold today or you would have heard it. They work great, but you will be tortured. So you better just be ready for that until it finally will go in, in the way you think it's going to go. Right? So just, if you guys, this is what you, you have to – there's another guy's. Um, you have to condition yourself to, to – if you understand these markets are just meant to algo everyone out of their money, then you're ready for the whipsaws. You're not, like, panicking every time the market moves against you. You're forcing the market, so that's why I force – so say this did this, 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 and I did get long off the setup, and this is still in play, by the way. My stop goes an ATR plus 15% below here, and that's part in that spreadsheet. So if I do go long, by the way, that's this – I'm going long at 1075. My my stop out is 93. Right? And it doesn't matter what you're risking in points, you adjust your size. And this is what this tells you. So if I were risking, say ATR, ATR goes up to 15. I'm risking 40 points on a trade. That, that, that doesn't matter. You change your size. You don't change this. I don't impose my will onto the market. I don't say, I don't like risking 40 points when I trade. That's ridiculous. You change your size. That means, yes, you are traders. Like, well, that means I need to get an 80-point move. Well, trust me, if you get ATR, that's 15, you're probably going to get a 50, 60, 70, 80-point move, right? So this you this does not matter. This is what you change. And then you trade accordingly. There's just such a fallacy out there. And this is why most traders fail, because they don't want to risk. I get emails all the time. Got one not too long ago. I like your strategy in NASDAQ, but I don't like the amount that you're risking there. I, I like to risk 10 points to make 20. The market does not care what you want to risk. The market cares about the volatility. So adapt to the volatility and change your contract size. If you're doing anything other than that, you are not going to make it in this business. I'm telling you, just please learn from me. That's why I tell my trade room every day. Like the stuff that I sit there and rant about, so on and so forth, it's from 25 years of experience of getting my head kicked in. There's great, great times and there's horrible times. Learn from my mistakes so you don't have to go through 25 years of getting your head kicked in. That's the whole point. So the point of me doing these webinars for you on here, it's the whole point of my trade room. There's no reason to go through all those years. It's called you know, modeling, you know, doing air quotes or copying someone. Learn from my mistakes and don't go through them. That's what I'm trying to show you guys, right? And if you're trading with static stops, you're not going to make it. You may do well for a while, but when volatility increases, you're going to get killed. So just if there's one thing, well, there's a bunch of things you should be learning from these webinars, but adjust your stuff to the volatility. Speaking of volatility, there is absolutely none. <clears throat> Any other questions, Bruce? You there, Bruce? Bueller? Yeah, Bueller? sorry. Bueller? Um, uh, there's a um, question on, uh, well, I'll just read it out here because uh, we, we've got to uh, get going here. Um, but uh, uh, if you use a four hour, using a four hour time frame setup, do algos look at the time frame to shake you out? I don't really know how to answer that. Do the algos, algos look at the first of all, there's about 3 million algos in here. There's different algos, you know, for scalping. There's algos trading off of the, you know, the VWAP. There's algos trading off of, um, you know, market profile commodity. There's tons of algos. I mean, I, I don't know how to answer that. There's always algos everywhere. Um, I mean, the, the, what you take from that is you've got to be able to identify important areas and make the market prove like I tell you, like I said before, the market sees this stuff just like we see it, obviously. Or not the market, the the, the big money, the algos. Right? Because most of the time, the algos are the big money. They're the people that can afford to, to program all this stuff, right? So if you understand where these areas are, then you're not shaken out on nonsense because most of trade is nonsense until they run into the big money. And then 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 the algos, the, the big money is the algos' worst, na worst nightmare. 
because this big money only comes in you know, 10, 20 percent of the time. The other 80 percent of the trade is this stuff. So what you need to understand about algos is force the algos. So if you love the long here, say you even want to get long in this zone, which I don't do. I wait for it to move out of here. Say you got long in here. Well, place your stop outside of Algoville, meaning I've known by watching thousands of these that to stay out of out, like if it's able to push an ATR away from this zone, then something bigger is going on um, versus just whipsawing around the volume of it. That's why I put my stops way outside. So with algos, you're never going to know all the algos. You're never going to know what anyone's doing unless you're sitting next to them. As a general rule, put this is why I trade the way I do. Right. This is why I risk and make uh, I don't get in until it gets an ATR out of there. And I because I know this will happen around a volume event, I force my trades to be outside of it because now I know something bigger is going on if it's able to get outside those areas. Right. So condition yourself to sit through this because this is 80 percent of the time and make your make sure you put your stops away from these volume events if you're using this to trade. And like I've said, if you're not using this in some shape, way or form, then you are you don't have all the information. I don't care how great of a trader you are. You don't have all the information. I say it every time. You would be a much better trader if you use this information. Right. So they've been here. Here's another thing too, how, I, how you can keep watch tick strike here. So they've been pretty much selling this thing for the last however many hours. Like this has been firing off a bunch. It's not really doing anything yet. It still hasn't got an ATR blow here. So if this finally subsides and this market never is able to even push an ATR out of here, then I really, really like the long, right? Because they're selling it for an hour and it's not really going anywhere, right? So that's another thing you can get from this stuff and from this as well, obviously. Like it's, they keep selling it and it's not moving out of here. You're like, okay, great. When they're done, now they're in trouble because they've been aggressive this entire time, just like they were over here. And you're going to get the pukes to the upside. And as long as this market doesn't trade, Time before we get off here, let's check the ATR just to see what we're gonna do. Let's see the validation price. No, oh, that's because I changed that. I was like, why is that 15? 5.04. So, this doesn't trade down to 93.75. It's only three points away, but if this holds here, watch out. Watch out above. If it does break, does trade 93.75, my longs are canceled, and then I'm just waiting for a brand new setup. And then I'm gonna, and I also know this happened too. I'm not trading off of this specifically to the short side because I already got ATR above there, but I know these guys are in trouble too. And then I'm looking for short setups. That's my thesis, this thing's gonna get killed. Right, so that's what I'm watching. So you, so you see like I, I'm implementing my thesis with what I'm seeing here. So this is what you want to watch for structure-wise, too, before we get off here. This is multi-day balance. That is a breakout. When markets break out, many times they'll test the top of balance, then go. They'll even come sometimes all the way down to the high volume, they'll then go. If this market today or tomorrow, probably going to happen today, especially with all this buy ice here, if they're wrong, if this gets through this high volume, no, we talked about this earlier, that is a fail breakout. Watch out below. It should do that. So... I have all that in my head, so I'm just waiting, right? So I know, thesis-wise, I'm not doing anything yet. Still still potentially take that long. If this market busts this my volume node, which I'd say, and this is just a, an area, say right around 3990-ish, if that market gets below, my thesis is immediately going to switch to short. Then when I get short setups, I take them the bigger size, right? Because the short setups are the driver. My thesis is short. Then I trade bigger to the downside. See what I'm saying? I'll still take longs. So say this comes down here and I get a barf long, I'll still take it because I'm a day trader and that's what that, that strategy demands I do. But I won't trade it with bigger size because I, I would think this is going to happen. So you see how you can align everything like ties together. You can align your thesis and then wait for real-time volume events, which is the driver of the market. When that agrees, then you go for the throw. You're like the sniper waiting to blow someone's head off. All right, Bruce, no other questions. We're at the time. You got your other guys starting, I think. So sorry, no trades. Like, I mean, we had the, I had the crew trade. That was about it. But this is still on play. It's on, I will go long here until this disqualifies, and then I will look for shorts, potentially. No, no, I think we're, we're all caught up. Uh, questions. Uh, and, uh, yeah, no, thanks. Thanks, Scott. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, everybody, uh, Scott will be back uh, next Thursday, uh, every every Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, so uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll see you we'll see you then. Yep, and every day in my trade room, you can hear me complain and say guys too. So. Oh right, uh, yeah, I, I've put your your links in here um, a few times. I'll do it one more time here for your trading room and your website, etc. Uh, so uh, if you uh, are interested in reaching out to Scott, there you go. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's uh, uh, we'll, we take it from there. Cool. So just keep an eye on this. As long as this doesn't trade ninety three fifty, I'm still taking that long. So we'll see what happens by the end of the day. You can't expect a big move out of this area. That would be my call. All right. Have a great uh, rest of the week, weekend, and I'll see you guys next Thursday. All right. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Bruce. Bye-bye.